Hello, my friends. We are back again. My name is Kyle Searcy. And Kemi Searcy. We're the senior pastors of Fresh Anointing House of Worship, one church in a bunch of locations. Actually, we have Montgomery, Alabama. We have Norcross, Georgia. We have you, our online audience. We have our Fresh Oil Fellowship of Churches and many Fresh Anointing churches all around the world. And God bless you. We're very honored to have this time with you. But today we're going to talk about something, part two, about a very, very exciting topic because my wife has written her sixth book. Hey. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> it's a book called Bouncing Back, Winning Over Life's Disappointments. We began talking about it last week. And boy, there's so much on this topic. We have to come back and talk about it again. So first of all, how do you feel having written your sixth book? Very excited. Feel excited. You know, uh, before I wrote the first one, I always was watching you do it. And, you know, I was like... I remember I kind of helped you on that first one. Yes, bit. a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> but then, you know, I, didn't, I, I didn't, didn't even touch this one I at didn't, all. I <laughs> didn't quite know where to begin or yeah. anything like that. So... Thank you, because, you know, they say when you hang around the right people, you do well. Yeah, that's and, why I, uh, I speak with a little bit of accent. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the other day when you said, what did you say? You said, uh, what did you say, what's the deal or something? Yeah, what's the deal? You said, what's the deal? And we were like, my kids were like, that didn't come from after. That didn't hang around there. <laughs> so anyway, we hang around each other and we, we, we grow on each other and so forth. But yeah, you've done well. You've done well. I remember the struggle on that first book and man, it was tough. And I, I you know, I remember grabbing and just kind of getting some stuff done for you. Then your second book, you did a little bit more. And your third book, I think it was all you. Yes. And then your fourth book. And then this one, I didn't even hardly know you were writing it. I knew you were writing, but I didn't know where you were. So you have gotten to the point you've grown in book writing. And, uh, hey, that's a great thing. So keep on, keep on going, because I know there's more in you. And right now yes. you're putting out about a book a year. Yes. And uh, I thank God for uh, Jan that yeah. edits and helped me. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we all need help. Been good. Yeah. yeah. So, so Jan's out there helping out. And thank you, Jan, if you're watching. I know you watch with us. So uh, what a, what a, what a great blessing. Now, this book is so timely. It is. Uh, it is a right now word because a lot of people are dealing with disappointments. You know, it's interesting in the Bible, uh, when Jesus talks about the end times and talks about things that will happen, wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, yes. earthquakes in yes. diverse places, uh, one of the things he says is, see that you be not troubled. Yes. He said, see that you be not, not troubled. Trouble. What does that tell you? That the response of most people is going to be, they're going to be? Trouble. They'll be troubled. Yes. So God is giving his people a word, his leaders a word to say, do not be troubled. Or let me put it another way, do don't not be, be disappointed. Don't be disappointed because it's a characteristic. So this book is excellent. And you've got several chapters in here. Yes. And I want to just kind of go, go through a couple of these things and let you just give us a snapshot. Uh, God's best is possible is chapter one. What is that talking about? God's best is possible because many times when we face so much disappointment, mm -hmm. you try and fail, try and fail, you tend to feel like, well, you know what, well, maybe it's not for me. You mm -hmm. know, maybe this is my lot. So in other words, when people are disappointed, they lose hope. They lose hope that... and, and they settle. Oh, okay. They lose hope and they settle for whatever. Oh, man. But 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 you have to realize that God's best is always possible. If we can get out of that mode of disappointment and allow the devil to beat us down and causes us to just stay there. So it's kind of like people get conditioned. It's, yes. it's like if you take fleas and put them in a jar yes. and you put a lid on the jar, they spend the first whatever hours or day to get out. bumping up and they beat themselves against the top of that lid so many times. Eventually, you could unscrew the jar. And they will settle down there because they are feeling like, you know, why try? And, and you know, the thing is they keep jumping. Yes. But, but they, they will jump right to the level that's right below the lid because they've conditioned to themselves. themselves. Yes. So that's what you're talking about. There are people who, because of disappointment, have conditioned themselves. and they built not expect up, more than anything of so, themselves. So they've built up kind of walls yes. to say, well, if I don't, keep pressing, maybe I won't get myself hurt. Wow. If I don't try, why well, I won't be disappointed. But you start out the book by saying God's best is still possible. It's still possible. I don't care where nah, you are, where you've been, nah, somebody, how disappointed you have been. Now somebody's out there watching us, yes. and they, they're 65 and above. Are you trying to tell them God's best is still possible? Yes. Until, you know, His grace is 
renewed every morning. Mm, his mercy his is new every morning. Yeah. As long as we still have, have breath in our nostrils, mm. God's best is still possible. Wow. So God's not, not just not permissive will, yes. not leftover blessing. You know, it's not like the guy, who, uh, what was it, Jacob and Esau, when, when the blessing was stolen, Esau said, oh, Father, don't you have a leftover blessing yes, for me? Yes. So you're not talking about leftover blessing. Yes. You're his saying best. his best yes. is still. Oh, because he's redemptive. Wow. In all of his purposes. Wow. He can take what the devil stole and not just bring you to where you should have been, but he can take you way further. That is what it is. You can bounce back. Wow. And you can take those disappointments and make it work for you. So it's not like by the time you bounce, you lose momentum, so e each bounce is lower. You're saying you could bounce and get to the height you were supposed to be to begin with. Yes. Man, that is good. Say that in a different language. Can you say that in your language? <laughs> Come on, say God's best is still possible. Nyame. Nyame. Best. Best. It's still possible. <laughs> so the yeah, best is still possible. So listen, that word, I feel that for somebody. Yes, I really yes. feel that. And you need to know that it's not over till it's over. Yes. And and even, you know, even after we breathe our last, you know, it's one of the best things that ever it happened does? to us. Yes. So so God's best is still always before us. All right. Now then you talk about uh you've got company. You have company. What kind of company if I you're got? disappointed. Guess what? It's not only you oh, that has been disappointed. Okay. All of us, everybody. Okay. If you take the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, uh -huh. it's nothing but full of disappointed people. All right, walk me through it. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Who was disappointed in Genesis? Abraham. Abraham was disappointed. He How was, was he disappointed? He was disappointed mm -hmm. with his wife, Sarah. That's right. For many, many, many years, they asked for one thing. And that one thing took them 25 long years. And out of disappointment, they created Ishmael. Out of disappointment, they lied. Out of disappointment, you know, in so many ways. Wow. And you know what's, what's interesting to me? God told him a baby was coming. Yes. 25 years before the baby came. Yes. Why didn't God just wait till a year before? The process. <laughs> yeah, because of the process. Because he had to go of the process. Right. Moses was disappointed. Moses? How did Mo get disappointed? Mo. Mo? He was birthed for a purpose. Ah, and he had some destiny. Uh, and on. he was to be the deliverer of the Israelites. Mm. And killed in the process of trying to deliver them, found himself himself driven in the, so he he, killed, in the he wilderness. He killed an Egyptian. Yes. yes. And then when he came back with God's plan with God's blueprint in his hand, his people rejected still him, rejected him. Wow. He was disappointed. So there was disappointment all over. Okay, so Abraham disappointed, Mo was disappointed. Who else disappointed? Give me one more biblical character. Doesn't matter who it David is. was disappointed. King David got disappointed? Yes. Come on, talk to me. How David you? was a boy that was anointed king, uh -huh. 17, and uh -huh. he did not mount on the throne until he was 30. Okay. And in all throughout between 17 and 30, it was one disappointment factor after another. Wow. A mad king trying to kill him. Wow. Running and hiding in caves and running and hiding in, in tickets. It was nothing but disappointment. So, but God was using all of that. So if Abraham got disappointed, Mo got disappointed, David got disappointed. I got disappointed. You You've got disappointed. been disappointed. I've been disappointed. Is there anybody in the Bible didn't get disappointed? Now that I know, even Jesus was disappointed. Jesus got Can disappointed. Can you imagine coming down to save the people that you created and having them to beat you? Now, are you sure he was disappointed because he knew what was coming? He knew. But he, but you, the point is, he still did not like the outcome. He when did he, not. When he went you can it. be disappointed and not be disappointed. The feeling That's of disappointment. Word. That's a good word. The That's act word. of disappointment That's comes to all of us, but the feeling of disappointment, mm. you know, taking yourself down to the miry clay because of that disappointment, mm. is what we are talking about. Wow. So it's not. What happens outside is how it affects you inside. How it affects your disposition and how it makes you act. So a person could know that a job is going to fire some people or let some people go. And you could know that it's coming to you soon, yes. one day, so yes. you have that knowledge. Yes. But the day you get the pink slip, you could still feel disappointed. You can still. Yeah. And how deep you go in the disappointment, mm -hmm. depending on your actions. That's good. So Jesus knew it was coming. He wasn't, he what knew. you're saying is while it was happening to him, it still wasn't pleasant. He wa It wasn't pleasant. All he right. cried even. 
well, that's a good concept, girl. Let's see what you got next. So then you talk about choose, no, causes of disappointment. I'm sorry. Causes of disappointment. Causes of disappointment. What what is causing disappointment? You know, sometimes because of our makeup, uh -huh. all of us will be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But some people are prone to disappointment mm. a lot more than others mm. because of our disposition. Mm. Some of us are a, li a little bit too needy. Mm. You know, so when you find yourself a little bit too needy, you are easily disappointed. Mm. When you find yourself a little bit too on the emotional side, mm. you're so emotional, you cannot grab hold of your emotions, mm. you are prone to disappointment, mm. other than the average person. Mm. You know, so there are our makeup. Now, those things we can help are we, some people just kind of like born more emotional. Like I know in my family, there's one person I'm thinking of, hey, I know you out there. <laughs> just, just so emotional, feels everything, always been like that, has a real compassion for people and so forth. So that's just kind of the way they are. Then other people in the family are a little bit more stoic and yes. more. So is is that something you can kind of help or is that something you just learn who you are and you figure out how to manage? There's a negative and a positive actions uh, uh, sense to all of our makeups. Okay. To every makeup, there's a positive and a negative mm -hmm. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So when you find yourself emotion. God gave us our emotions. His health is good, mm -hmm. but when it's too much on the fleshly side. Okay, so you temper it by the spirit. Yes, you by have to temper spirit, it by the spirit. The you have to flesh. ask the Lord right. to temper my temperament. Yeah, I'm good. too way on here because yeah. of that. Every little thing disappoints me. Wow. So you're at the right place, by the way. I'm Kyle Searcy, and this is my wife. Kemi Searcy. And we are here where the pastors are fresh and on, and you've tuned into the right place. This is our pre-service. You haven't missed service yet. It's our pre-service. In just a few minutes, we're going to have praise and worship. Then there'll be an, a couple of announcements and things. And then after that, I'm going to come to you with a word. So service is going to begin either at 9 or you might be watching our 11 o'clock service. So this is our pre-service. We're talking about bouncing back. Winning Over Life's Disappointments, a new book my wife just came out with. So we're talking about the book, but we're also talking about the concept of disappointments. And we're in the midst of causes of disappointment. So we're talking about how sometimes uh, people who are a little bit too needy and a little bit too uh, emotional. emotional sometimes can suffer from disappointments more. So that's one of the causes. What are some other causes and of disappointment? people that tend to expect too much, okay. when your expectations are a little bit out of whack and you expect too much from people, you, you can easily get this. You know, you know, that's important because in marriage, let's just yes. take relationships. Yes. Okay? yes. Every relationship has a purpose. Yes. And if you expect more out of a relationship than what its purpose is, you will be disappointed. Yes. Okay. And I think we really have to speak about that about relationships in the USA because the expectation for relationships is is in some ways it's it, it needs to come into balance exactly because we watch too much tv yes too many movies growing up too much too much fantasy opera. in a mind yes. too much soap opera so people expect marriage to be romance every day yes. bliss every day yes. uh it's supposed to be about a feeling he makes me feel good she yes. makes me feel good but in reality it's work it's work it's it's commitment uh, meeting God says, each other's needs. Meeting each other's needs. Husband, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Yes. Wife, submit yourself to your husband. It's it's really about uh, women showing men respect, men showing women love. It takes work. It's dying to yourself. So when the expectation is, he going to make me feel good every yes. day, yes. and six months into it, you feel horrible, yes. then you want to trade him in for a better model, and in reality, the next model will be worse. worse. <laughs> no problem you know, than likely. God gave us seasons in yes. life. Mm -hmm. You know, we have winter, we have summer, we have autumn, we have spring. Mm -hmm. Every season is different, mm -hmm. you know, but in, somehow in relationships, we expect every season to be summer. That's good. And it it, it's not always like that. No. You know, there are times you... Ups and you downs, get growing times. And, and it, those seasons are there to, to, to grow us. Mm. You know, God gave you me and me, you, mm -hmm. to be able to help each other mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, he says he gives, he gave the husband, the man, the man help me. Mm -hmm. You know, so if I'm to help you, mm -hmm. certain things I may ascribe you may mm -hmm. not like. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. vice versa, but we got to realize that we are here to grow, help each other along the path of life. So when the expectation of marriage is not right, yes. our relationships, our friendships, or even parent-children relationships, then the 
opportunity for disappointment is much it's, greater. It's much greater. So Miles Monroe said, when you don't know the purpose of a thing, abuse, abuse becomes inevitable. inevitable. You will absolutely abuse it. So we need to go back and rediscover the purpose for, yes. let's say, parent-child relationships. Yes. It's not really friendship. It's training. It's development. Marriage relationships. Uh, you know, there's so much we can say on that. We're not talking about marriage. We're talking about disappointment. But that right there was good. Yes. That was you know, good stuff that you good. said. That's good. Wasn't that good? Come on, give me some thumbs there on Facebook. Wasn't that good? Let's see what you got next. Then you said understanding the processes of God. Yes. So how does that end, end up fitting in the disappointment book? Understanding the processes of because God. Because God would take you from point A to point B. But in between that destiny... He's getting you, he will get you ready. Mm. And in the process of getting ready, God will assign some things that you will not like. Give me a Bible example. Who, Bible who? example will be David again. I, I, I said that you earlier. Like David. Yeah, but that's, his story is amazing. He's ordained to be king. And between that time and the time he was actual king, King Keenan, it took a long time. Yeah. Why did that happen? Because he was a little man, a young man. God had to grow him up. Called to be a king. He had no clue how to be a king. He didn't have any idea of how uh, kingdom works. So God had to create an avenue to put him in the palace. First unknown, you know, play music for the king. Secondly, God had to uh, bring him and put him in front of Goliath. Mm. You know, Goliath was God's assignment for David. God put him, it wasn't the devil. God put him in front of Goliath. How else would Israel recognize him? If he's to rule, he comes from a small tribe in Israel. Nobody knew him. Mm. At the time, his father was unknown. You know, how take yourself wanting to become the president of the United States out of the corner of nowhere. Yeah. It has to be a process. Mm. You know, you want to be a doctor, it has to be a process. So when we don't understand the process, the detail, the length of time, all of that, up, we can end up disappointed. God, we wow. get a prophecy, we see the dream, we see the vision, and then we want to see the reality the next week. Mm. But God, it's not realistic. It's not realistic. And the process takes time. Mm. And so he, we, uh, my question was, God, why, if I'm going to be king at 30, why do you have to tell me at 17? Why After didn't you process. wait for me close two years to the time? But God needed my cooperation hmm. to work through the process. Wow. You know? Now you talk about how to advance through the process. So how do you do that? The same method, how mm. you process, you see it. This is what God is doing. Mm. You know, I'm not going to hate the process. I'm going to actually work with him. If he's having me there, I'm putting on my think, think, thinking cap. I'm realizing that he has me here for a reason. He's working something out. He's working That's something out. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know why he's doing it. I don't know how long it's going to take but to I know what he's, you're doing, but he's doing but something. But he's doing something. Okay. And yeah. then many times he gives us little victories. Mm. He gives us little victories. And in that, you know, David was given 1% of his inheritance. That's right, when he got one tribe. One After tribe. Saul finally died, he got After one tribe. After Saul finally died, he got one tribe. Yeah, and, he, he, and he was expecting 12. Though. He's expecting 12. And he got he, one. He never let go of that promise. Mm. But all along the way, God was giving him little victories. Mm. God was giving him little victories. Mm. Look at the children of Israel mm. in the wilderness. Mm. You know, they were going through the wilderness. The Bible says their shoes never wore out. Mm. Their clothing never wore out. Mm. God gave them manna. God gave them whatever they asked for. You have to recognize the little victories along the way. Little victories, that's the key. Open your eyes and see those. Open you know that your God eyes. Is working. Yeah? Yes, and see those. Yeah. You know, and work with them. Mm -hmm. That's the process. He's taking yeah. you there. You gotta work with them. But you gotta work with him. But when you don't see it and you are moody and you are angry 
and he said B, and you say yet, yeah, you say C, yeah. you will never get there. And the danger of that is when the time comes, you'll be so emotionally bankrupt and beat up and mad. Many times you'll be out of place, so God can't even use you to do what he wants. He can't use you. You have to be really careful and about that. If, even if he take you there, you are not prepared. Wow. Hey, you're in the right place. This is our free service in just a little bit. Praise and worship is going to begin. And we got a message for you. So go ahead. It's still not too early to share the stream and let somebody know we're here. We're talking about the book that Kimmy Searcy just finished, her sixth book called Bouncing Back, Winning Over Life's Disappointments. We're having a good time talking about that. Well, you need to get a copy of this book. Go to KimmySearcy.com and grab it. You can go to the Why Me website. You can go to the Fresh and Owning website. They'll redirect you there. You can go to Amazon and get a copy of it. But we are talking some good stuff there. Then after you talk about how to advance through the process, you talk about help hedging leadership. Yes. Against disappointments. Yes. Hedging. Hedging. Protecting your leaders. Against prayer. This, protecting your leaders. Against disappointments. Is that so? How yes. are you going? No, wait, wait, wait. How are you going to? Because we talked about that everybody gets disappointed. Yes. And we talked about that. Now you're saying there's a way we can hedge against disappointment? Yes. How? Our leaders are talking about Saul and David. Okay. David was sent to Saul. The Saul was so demonized that he wanted to kill this young man. He, I guess he found out he was oh. his replacement. You know, so God placed place us under leadership, you know, that if we are not careful, we don't pray for them. Mm. We don't do what God put us there to do because Saul hurt David so badly. Mm. But David, because of God's process of time, he was able to not put his man, mouth on the man of God. He kept his heart right. He, he kept, kept his, his heart right. right. He kept his mouth in the right place, you know. So my idea there was let's let's cover our leadership. Let's not be disappointed. So that the things that happen to our leaders don't put them in a place where disappointment negatively affects them. Affects them and affects so us. Let's cover. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Because what happens to the leader is going it's to, going to flow down. Yeah. And many people are out of churches because the leadership did this. Mm. And the leadership did that. Mm. And they are losing heaven. Mm. And they will never go back to church or never believe in Jesus because Saul did this. Mm. Or my leader did that. Or even my now, parent now did this. Now, some people don't even think about leaders being able to be disappointed. Yes. They don't think about your pastor and your leader. Yes. Or a person who's an authority figure in your life ever having bad days. They think we always got it going on because they see you on the stage. Exactly. And everything going on. But yes. you're saying, no, you got to pray for pray your leader. Pray for them because they are also going through something. That's good. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. All right. Then you talk about gathering faith disrupts disappointment yes what you talking about gathering faith when you know and you know for sure that the god that you have believed in will never never drop you will never never disappoint you that disappointment factor is reduced. So when you have strong faith. When you have strong faith. No matter what it looks no like. No matter what it looks like. He's going to come through. He's going to come through. When you have won't he do it, won't he will it faith. It may take 25 <laughs> years. It may take 30 oh, years. Oh, man. You know, it took 25 years for Sarah and Abraham because they were birthing a nation. Okay. It takes. But you have to keep the faith. You have to keep the faith. Mm. You got to realize uh, the Hannah, it took Hannah many, many, many years for God to finally broke through for her because she was birthing a prophet, mm. you know. Mm. So it may have taken long because God is birthing something significant in your life. You know, it's not easy. If it's easy, it comes cheap. But if it's not easy, if it's something worthwhile, it's going to take time. Yes, it will. The process will be longer. You know, think about a person becoming a doctor and the person becoming um, a bricklayer. You know, who will study the longest? Mm -hmm. Who will stay at night, night drinking coffee, you know, the most? Definitely the doctor because he's called to care for the soul of people. Yeah, it's the just a lot more to learn. Yes. Yeah. You know, the health of humanity. So there's a whole lot more. Mm. So when your 
promise is being delayed and everything you've cried for, you prayed for, don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Oh, Put on, on that faith. Hear that Put word. on faith. Believe God. Knowing, I think it was uh, Paul that says, I know whom I have believed. And I know what I've entrusted in his hand. And I know that definitely he will bring me to an expected end. That's a good word. That's a very he good will word. bring me, I know whom I have believed. And whatever I have entrusted in his care, I believe that he will bring it to an expected end. Hope you're hearing this. What is your expected end? Hope you're listening. You know, you don't have to be disappointed about it because it's taking long. What are we talking about? Bouncing back? You, God will bounce you back. He will take you from zero to a hundred. You know what, what I love about the analogy of bouncing back? We're always moving. Yes. You know, if you're talking about bouncing back, that means we're always moving. Yes. We're, we're, we might hit this wall, but man, we're going to bounce back and go to this wall. But here's what I believe. If we stay in God, we're always moving forward. Yes. We're always bouncing forward. Yes. Always going forward to the next level. Amen. Bouncing back, winning over but life's life disappointments. Now, you also dealt in here the disappointment danger zone. What the disappointment danger zone. What am I talking about? Disappointment can be so detriment to our spiritual well-being, to our life's period. Because if you cannot let go, you may lose your soul in the process. Oh, that's good. You may backslide in the process. You know, there are many, many people still sitting in pews in churches whose soul is really at risk right now. You know, they are still there acting and saying the right things and singing the right songs, but check their hearts are so far from God because of one answer that was delayed or one thing that they felt like God hasn't done. Hope, hope deferred makes it the heart makes sick. It makes the heart sick. Yeah. So you got to let it go. If you don't let go, you can lose in the process. Wow. You know, like I was saying, there are so many people that I have talked to that you, I watched the movie. It's, I talked about it in 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 the book in this book. Uh, what was the title again? Uh, God is not dead. Mm -hmm. We and I went and watched that movie. A professor was teaching in a class and ordered the students to every one of them write and say, "God is not dead. God, God is, is dead." dead yes. And there was a young Christian student that said, "No, I'm not writing that because God is not mm -hmm. dead." God is very much alive. He is not dead. And so this man challenged him to a debate. And so they sat down. The stu other students were to be the judge. And so they were debating the reasons why he felt like God is dead and the reason why he felt God wasn't dead. So back and forth. And the professor was getting so angry. And the young Christian asked him, Professor, why are you so angry? Why are you so adamant about God being dead? Mm. And then he got mad all of a sudden. He said, well, he's dead. He's dead because uh, at some point in his life, maybe 17, 18, his mother was diagnosed with cancer. And he prayed for God to heal the, uh, the mom. And the mom died. And from, from that time on, this young man made an inner vow that as long as he lived, he was never going to worship or go to church or have anything to do with God. And so the young man asked him, so how can you blame something on God that you claim doesn't exist? You say he's dead. You say he doesn't exist. Why are you blaming the death of your mother on a being that doesn't exist? He got mad and stormed out of the room. You know, and that's where many of us are because of the woundedness of our soul, because of one thing or the other, the coronavirus that's snatching parents and wives and cousins and aunties away. You know, the detriment of us losing our jobs in the process. You know, many, many things are happening at this time, at this season to a lot of people. And if we are not careful, if we don't see God for who he is, if we don't see him for the God who does not disappoint and see the devil who does these things mm. and we blame things on God, at the end, our soul may be at risk. So here's what's up. You, my friend, are going to bounce back. 
Yes. You may be in a place of disappointment, yes. headed toward it, but yes. you are going to bounce back. Get a copy of this book. Go to KimmySearcy.com. Go to Amazon.com and get it because you are going to win over life's disappointments. We declare there's a lot more in this book we didn't tell you about. So get a copy of it and read it. But more importantly, immune yourself to disappointment. Realize that God has a process. He's going to take you through the process and all is going to be well.